What's up, everyone, and welcome to the TCG cast, where Isaiah is hopping around while the intro rolls. I am your forever co-host, and I have my constant co-host, Isaiah, here with me. Isaiah, how are you doing today? Wait, I'm sorry. I messed up. Uh-oh. He does not I'm have his headphones in. in. Will he be able to hear me? Isaiah. Can you hear the gawkening? The gawkening? The gawkening. <laughs> No, Isaiah. absolutely not. I don't want to hear any of that. No. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. It's good to hear. It's good to hear. Been off a long day at work. We did a hundred and sixteen thousand dollars or something like that today. Oh well. Wow. Yeah, it's the the biggest day since I started working there. It was rough, oh, heck, yeah. but we're here to celebrate TCGs. And most importantly, yeah. we're here to celebrate Digimon because a lot has been happening in the digital realm of Digimon. So, yes, but before we get into that, I want to make two, uh, two, not like announcements, but well, oh gosh, I just thought of this. Oh yeah, okay, the housekeeping one announcement. I forgot about the housekeeping. Or, yeah, yes, the housekeeping. Mm-hmm. So for the first one, I would like to dedicate this episode. To my great grandfather Gilbert Smith Sr., who passed away on Saturday uh, while I was playing in the Digimon Nats. Um, so, you know, we'll R.I.P. Sorry to hear a, that. I I appreciate that. He was a very a very funny guy. Mm-hmm. Um, he also was a very awesome cook, um, and he shared uh, with my mom and myself his own uh, barbecue sauce. So for those that know me personally, and for those that know what pawpaw sauce is, then that's that, that's the sauce. So, but yeah, R.I.P. to my great grandfather. Mm-hmm. Right. I wish you the best in heaven, and and yeah. So what is in pawpaw sauce? Aha! Uh-huh, well, all fine. right. So don't give give away the secrets. But what is it based off of? Because I know here in North Carolina. We have this big debate over what good barbecue is, and I prefer yeah. vinegar based. There's some tomato based stuff to some honey based. Um, you know, you have your like your sweet heat and your mesquite uh, mm-hmm. barbecue. So, what is Pawpaw's sauce? It's tomato based. Tomato yeah. based. All right, that's and that's all I'm saying. That's respectable. I'll allow it. Yes. <laughs> and then the second thing that I wanted to bring up in housekeeping is this is the first podcast and black history month yep it is. this is great mm-hmm. yes even though that black people make history every day absolutely uh also okay your boys made history for mm-hmm. being one of the few black people to play in digimon nationals, nationals. Mm-hmm. so which is huge yes, that is huge and yeah absolutely yeah happy um uh black heritage month it's uh all all throughout february so on our next podcast we will definitely bring that up again because it's something to celebrate Yes. Um, and also something to learn. Like, we learn. Uh, Miriam sends me something every day um, about Black History Month. And then there's some stuff that I learned in school and I retained. And then there's some stuff where it's like, oh, wow, I didn't even know that. But yeah. Yes. Or, um, and like, low key, there was some stuff I didn't know. Because then you sent me something that was like, I think it was like on February 1st, somebody did something in like 1964 or um, something like that. There was, it was one of the first sit ins here in North Carolina. Um, and mm-hmm. I wrote a paper on it in the seventh grade. Okay. Yeah. Yep. It was one of the first sit-ins, and it was um, it was a, a, an amazing, an amazing show of power. And um, yeah, nothing but mad respect for those people. Wow. Yeah. Yes, that was incredible. Heck it yeah. was like I think it was one of the first in the in the country, actually, in the U.S. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Oh yeah, that's big. <laughs> Huge. That is big. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then, oh my gosh. Okay, this isn't like housekeeping, but, um, well, okay, I'll, I'll, say, I'll, I'll say that for now because it's not really housekeeping. <laughs> so, the last thing in housekeeping, um, so on, I believe, and we're still in the process of setting this up, but on February 17th, mm-hmm. we are hosting our, uh, we're hosting what I would call Isaiah's birthday extravaganza because mm-hmm. on February 15th, be my birthday. And we are going to be playing some Digimon, and uh, I'm I'm going to also be playing in this tournament. But I'm going to add like a little fun twist to it. Mm-hmm. So, 
with every game, so okay, I don't know if I want to do a game or a match, but for every game or match that I lose, I have to take a shot. Yep. So I say every game. See, like, and then every match you have to down your drink. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> you I want to get you fucking oh. <laughs> trashed, yo. We have the birthday celebration already set up. Looking right here. Well, uh oh, oh boy. Happy. Oh, there we go. Happy, happy, happy. happy. There, there, I, I don't see the age. Birthday. birthday Ta da! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd the age go? <laughs> and happy. Oh, to see happy birthday. Oh, oh, it's uh... a. <laughs> oh, I think I see it right now. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it's been up there since February. I mean, uh, January twenty eighth. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. That was Miriam's Goodness. birthday. Heck yeah. <laughs> we haven't taken it down yet. Oh. Okay, well. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and the last thing I wanted to talk about. Find us on Patreon. That... Follow us on Twitter. Oh my god. Patreon, Twitch. Mm-hmm. Twitch. We're there. We're finally above 50 uh, followers on Twitch, so we're now partnered with them. Yes. I know someone was asking, um, why can't they subscribe or whatever, so now you can subscribe if you'd like. Um, he just he headed over to our Patreon and said, and supported us there. So check, yeah, check us check us out. Wait, so are we affiliates now, or are we? I think, uh, I think you have to hit fifty, and you have to do eight hours every month, which okay. we've already hit that goal for February. No, heck yeah, no, we haven't hit that goal for February. We definitely hit in January. We did a lot of streaming yeah. in January. Uh, but so next... we're gonna be trying to grind for Twitch partner, mm-hmm. just like. Uh, Mario Gaming World, who is one of the, I believe he's either the first or second uh, Digimon content creator that's uh, got Twitch partner. So shout out to you. Mm-hmm. And also as a fantastic transition, because I wanted to talk about a little bit about uh, you and Nigel being able to commentate the last tournament with them. That mm-hmm. looked very fun and amazing. And I know, like typically, he commentates with like Izzy Cruz or. Um, I think I forgot what his friend's name is that plays the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, uh, but he yeah. talks with um, many Moon other people. Too. Yeah, and Moonrose. Mm-hmm. But he had you and he had Nigel on. Yep. Oh, uh-huh. I know. Oh, my gosh. And Nigel, Nigel was teasing. Was the teasing. Whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that man was smiling and, like crazy. Yeah, you said you couldn't make it, unfortunately, due to um, you had to work that day yesterday. Yeah. Um, and I was Sadly. like, you know who idolizes? Not idolized, but you know who adores Mario? Tamer Nigel. Our very own sure. TCG cast, Tamer Nigel. So I was like, why don't I hit him up? You know, be a fulfill in for Isaiah. And then uh, he did a fantastic job. The chat wanted him back. Oh, and there, yeah. we go. there we go, freezing again. That's not good. Oh. Here we go. It's fixed. It's all right. We're back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the chat wanted him back. He did so well. Um, I had to go to bed early because I, I wake up early in the morning to go to work. So. Yeah. But uh, he stayed the whole time, and Mario enjoyed his company. Yeah, it was fun. Oh, heck yeah. Had a blast. Yes, so hopefully it will be cool if, like, us three could, like, be on there, because I, 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 honestly, I really love commentating. Like, mm-hmm. Me too. I, like, I remember when we did our uh, tournament that mm-hmm. Virus won. Uh, yeah, commentating just that whole thing was just fantastic. Yeah. And I, I definitely want to do that again. Yeah, it's so So who knows? Too. Maybe, maybe there. Well, I guess we can do both for the birthday, uh, birthday one. I can just. I can have well, you in guess, between rounds. Yeah. Here, the last playing. Like depending on how quickly I can, well, either I could beat somebody or how quickly they can beat me. <laughs> I can just get on there. I'll yeah, so it sounds have, like um, a plan. I don't know. Nigel will probably participate. I don't know. Maybe I'll bring some, some spice. Maybe I'll just commentate myself. Give it a try. There you go. Yeah. And then have everyone on in, in between rounds. Or I'll, we'll just all jump into one big table and all chat in between rounds. Stuff like that. All the players who want to chat and stuff like that. That'd be fun. Yeah. I think I like you could that. also like interview people like after they finish their matches. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, we, you uh, just 2 owed this guy with Gobble Bond. How do you feel? And preach to them uh... about 50 card Eos Bond. And spread <laughs> the word. <laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> I was waiting for it. 
Heck yeah, I support. Um, what was the other thing I was gonna talk? I don't think I was. I don't think that was. I think that was it. That yeah. Was it. Yeah. Anything else? Yep. Happy Black History Month. Um, yes. Please go go explore some history. Yes. Do yourself a favor. If, Absolutely. Now. You it don't even have to be in American history. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just just learn some history. Yeah, learn, learn some, some multicultural history. history. Absolutely. The Zulus are a famous nation. And I I wrote yes. a huge paper on them too back in my uh my school years. And that my was really school fun. Years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. We go. And that's uh, that's pretty much it for housekeeping. Now we can talk about And that was magic. the show, everyone. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> oh, we're done? All right. <laughs> yep, that's it. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Magic the Gathering, nothing happened. They've released in a straw double feature. It flopped. Um, it was really just a cash grab. I heard some of the cards were garbage. The mm. bordering looked nice, but other than that, I mean, yeah. They were just looking to fill the gap in between Crimson Vow and, and Neon Dynasty. But Neon Dynasty looks... Excuse me. Neon Dynasty looks amazing. Uh-huh. Those full art Japanese lands. Oh. Duck. That's <laughs> <laughs> me. And then we got Brilliant Stars coming up around the same time too. And Arceus yeah. is out now too. Oh February, my gosh. February is a busy ass month, yo. Yes. Mm-hmm. And like, okay, I, I don't want to talk about this game. Because, and and this is definitely TCG related, but, like, they they have to make, like, a Hisuian, like, Arcanine card, right? Like, a Hisuian Arcanine V or something. Weird V Max. Yeah. I I don't want to spoil the other uh, Pokemon, because I don't think you've gotten that far yet. Nope, I've only played a couple hours. I did catch my first Shiny, though. Creaky Toon. And my first alpha was Creaky Tune, so you know what's coming? A full Creaky Tune team. Guys, right. have you done the Ponyta <laughs> uh, mission yet? It's going to be garbage. Have you done the what? The Pony tomorrow, uh mission? The side mission? Yeah. I have I have it. I've caught a Ponyta, yeah. Can you that ride Rapidash? The... Wait, what? Can you ride Rapidash as your mount? Uh no, man. Fuck weird, you yo. Give me rapid ass. <laughs> no, but oh, a slight spoiler. I like very minuscule spoiler. You can't catch a rapid ass. I can't. It, you can. Oh yeah, like, I found an alpha you're... one. And it, oh it, okay. It, it okay. aggroed me and tried to kick my ass. Yeah. So I, I see. I yeeted it out of there. I had like a level twelve Oshawott, and that was it. <laughs> hey, the thing that pisses me off is like. Like the like the like the alpha Pokemon being able to uh, attack twice, mm-hmm. and the shit that pisses me off even more is when they just like agile style hit you for like half your health, oh, and then they just hit yes. you again with the regular one, yes. and then just Macho you. was fucking demolishing me, yo. <laughs> he would come in with like agile style bulk up, and then like one shot all my Pokemon. I'm like, bro, just stay in the Pokeball, like please. Don't kill my whole team. I don't need to be wiped and go back to base camp. Cause I, I, but I do have an alpha Machop now, which means that alpha Machamp is on the on the way. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think that like cards like Hisuian Arcanine or even like Hisuian or not? I guess it's not Hisuian, but like Cleaver will mm-hmm. like retain like their like their typing because like I know like Arcanine is like a like is a is a fire type card, but I know Hisuian Arcanine is like fire and dark or something like that. Like um Houndoom. Something like that, yeah. So do you think that when they make this card, do you think they're gonna do like they're gonna make it like a dark uh, Pokemon? Or do you think they're gonna keep it as red? Mm, I mean it, it depends on how meta they wanna make it. Or if they just wanna do it for fan service you know yeah um i don't know too much about the pokemon meta Mm -hmm. i don't know how good a dark type deck would be but it'd be cool to see arcanine as a dark type yeah like i don't 
Yeah, like, I don't really keep it. Well, I know a bit of the Pokemon meta, and I know that, like, Mew VMAX is, like, the number one mm-hmm. deck and whatnot. But I know, like, uh, like a chase card that, like, uh, like a lot of decks, like, tech in their in their deck is uh, Umbreon VMAX, which mm-hmm. is Dark, of course. So I think that's the only card. But I don't know about, like, Dark decks, like, in general. Yeah. I think I could be wrong. Yeah. It, Viewers, if you know, then find yeah, me in the comments. Down in the comments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. it, maybe it defines the meta. Dark and nine. <laughs> Dark and nine. <laughs> <laughs> now I do, I, I do have like somewhat of an interesting take though. Now you know how like there's like rapid strike and single strike and fusion strike now. Yes, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're gonna keep that concept. But it's not going to be, like, single strike and rapid strike, but it's going to be, like, agile style and strong style. Mm-hmm. I could I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, it's sort of, it's sort of like what it is right now. Like, single strike is hitting with a big beefy hand, and then rapid mm-hmm. strike is going fast. So that's sort right. of like what they have right now in Arceus. Now, fusion strike, I don't know. I haven't seen anything in Arceus like that. <laughs> I guess you just combine the two in the card game. I don't know. I don't, I don't play the card game. But uh, I don't even know if. Huh. I don't, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> yep. Well, enough Pokemon talk. You know what we're Pokemon really here talk. for? Oh, yes. We're here for the Digimans. Yes. And the Digimans is happening. In Texas on March 19th. And you know who's going to Texas on March 19th? Huang Zero. The motherfucking TCG cast, yo. And us, yes. Yes, we will be <laughs> attending the North American Digifest in Arlington, Texas on the 19th or 20th. So if you're there, come in and, uh, and give us a shout out. Come shake our hands. Um, come say hi. I will we'll take spread... pictures. My gospel of 50 card EOS Mon in person. Oh god. <laughs> Yo, I if Bring you're me like... an EOS Mon and I will sign an EOS Mon for you. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> if you want us to sign anything, we'll 100% do it. Yep. <laughs> Except for Wings. Oh my gosh. That's off limits. That's gonna be. Yeah, that. Honestly, Digifest is going to. Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> Wait, hold up, wait, rewind that, what? <laughs> you said we'll sign anything, and I said except wieners, that's off limits. <laughs> <laughs> just, just slip that oh one by. <laughs> um, anywho, I'm just gonna move on for that. You're ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Oh my goodness. I hope. I don't even know what I was gonna person. say. I hope they keep it in person. Oh yes, yes, yes! Please. I, oh my gosh, yes, yes, please! Like the, I honestly, I think this event will probably, if it stays in person, will probably be bigger than nationals. Mm-hmm. And I, I do, and la- later on, whenever we talk about my nationals, uh, experience, I, I'm definitely gonna bring this point back up. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like being in person and like being able to like experience the game. Other people, and also we're gonna be playing in an esports arena. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. gonna be lit. That's fucking amazing. Uh, Miami is in a convention center. They're hoping, they're having another one in Miami, uh, yes. March twenty sixth through twenty seventh. So the weekend after that one, uh, but we get to play in an esports arena, yo. That's probably that's where they play League of Legends. That's yeah. where they played League of Legends in this stadium in Arlington. It blows my mind that I get to visit that. <laughs> I'm going to take pictures with everyone there. Um, and then I'll spread my gospel about 50 card EOS Mon. This man's going to be sitting in the corner talking about... <laughs> and EOS Mon is the best deck in the TCG. <laughs> and if anybody has anything else to say, screw I'll, you. I'll have one of those signs like people in the street and be like, The Reckoning is coming! <laughs> the end of the world! <laughs> <laughs> Pray to your egos, Mons. Yes, the day of reckoning has arrived. Ding, 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 ding. And I'll, I'll have a cowbell, too. I want that on a t-shirt. 
Oh um, my goodness. Canada is having but yeah. one, but it's an online event, unfortunately. Oh, I mean, yeah. they're still having one, this, which is fortunate, but unfortunately it's online. I, I really yeah, hope Canada's these having one. I've already uh, bought my flight else? tickets, yo. Oceania. Nice. Oceania's having one. I think Latin America's having one. Yep, Latin America. Um, e- I know Latin America's having two. Yeah. One's, I think, is in like Koki or hosted by Koki. Something like that. But that's also going to be online. All right, so I don't know. The participation. Uh, the Fest set, Event Pack, and Event Pack 2. So you get three mm-hmm. of those each, and then the Fest set for one. Um, oh, top, yeah, I forgot we're getting packs. Yeah. Top 128 gets another Fest set and another Event Pack. Um, so first place gets a Fest stamp super rare, a Fest winner super rare stamp, and then some more Event Packs. Is someone getting money? Top eight. Oh, okay. That'd be nice. I hope what? I place top eight and pay for a plane ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting money from those? Yeah, if you place top eight, you get an event pack, uh, Digi Egg set, 2021 vault set, and then $250 travel voucher. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Um. So let's see. The Fest set, 10 card set. Here is what you can get. I think we already previewed this. These look good. Yo, that Huckmon rest in peace because <laughs> Chessmon just got fucking annihilated. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta I gotta see where the vault um, set. So this is on the, yeah, this is on the Digimon card uh website, right? Mm. Let's see, okay. who gets the eggs? Uh top eight gets an egg set, top sixteen gets an egg set. So if you get top sixteen you get a digi egg set. This whole thing. That's nice. That is just nice. For par- partic- oh, just for participating, you get this right here. All of these. I would assume you get all of these. Yeah. I, I can't quite see it. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't share my screen. Alrighty, well. Well. Uh-huh. Oh, nuts. That's going to ruin everything. Oh, well. Oh. Uh. Technical difficulties. Boop. Make sure you like and subscribe. Yeah, and comment down below on how well we've done. Yes. And how professional we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Now you can see. Yes. It. Um. So yeah, the last thing I do want to point out about the, uh, how awesome Digifest is going to be. There are some big content creators that are going to be commentating this event. We got Max Tapira, True Champ, Steve, True Champ Steven, Huang Zero, uh, Louis the Panda, mm-hmm. who won uh, one of the Digi the Showdowns. Digi mm-hmm. um, who else? I, I think there's somebody else. I can't quite remember. There's some big content creators. So, yeah, this is going to be a big deal. And like I mentioned, probably arguably might be slightly better than Nationals. Uh, if it's in person, it definitely will be. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yeah. <laughs> but yes. And also, speaking of competitions and whatnot, so, well, I guess not competitions. Let's go to the next topic. <laughs> uh, Spencer, I want you to do something for me. Yes, if ma'am. you don't mind. Mm-hmm. Did you say ma'am? <laughs> You're ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, if you could go to our YouTube channel at TCG Cast, I just want to to point out. I just want. I, was, I just want to flex something real quick. Just just a small, a minor flex. Actually, low key major flex. Okay. <laughs> so there's a video that we made. Oh, we've hit 100 subscribers too. Oh, pew, pew, pew. go! How can we forget? We hit 100 subscribers on YouTube. Let's yes. go. Now. The third video, sir. Mm-hmm. Everything wrong with just one. Now, I wanted to talk about this because, he, like, this is like low key, like, like it. It didn't. I don't. I don't know how much traction it built amongst the Digimon community, but to the people that commented on our video whenever we made this out a second time, it. it 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 was a big a big deal apparently. <laughs> it's and like, yeah, it 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 triggered 
a lot of people. And it's funny because you want to know who we triggered? The Jasmine players. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, and I think, and to quote myself from the video, the sweaty, tryhard, only played Lord Knight because it was the best deck in the format, <laughs> and then switched to Jess Wan players. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, you guys. Thank you for the views. Yep, 579. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> that's, that's free real estate right there. Yeah, there was a lot, oh. of, uh, a lot of discourse. The second time. The first time, everyone thought it was hilarious. second time, people were like, All right. Why are you hating on Jessmon? This, that, and the third. When we have Agubon. And when we have Gabubon. And I was like, Okay, well, we didn't set out to make a Jessmon rant video. It just happened right. naturally. And the shit was funny. And I think the funny thing about, like, when we first released this video, mm -hmm. this was, like, kind of like... Like, kind of like the apex to where, like, the popularity of Jessmon was just, like, very high. Mm -hmm. Then, I think it was, like, two weeks after that, when, like, everybody was kind of, like, realizing that Gabu Bond was, like, the best deck in the format. And just how broken, like, all the EX of one cards came out. And then when we reposted that, that was when people were just like, Hmm, how <laughs> dare he? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, yo, first of all, it's a repost. Yeah. Second of all, Thanks why are you views. mad? <laughs> <laughs> and third of all, okay, and this is, and I'm not trying to, like, to appeal to to the Just Mom people, but, like, I, like, when it comes to, like, card games and whatnot, and when it comes to, like, kicking out a deck, like, if I say that deck or Just Mom's trash and nobody should play it, don't let me be the main reason why you don't play this deck. Test that crap out for yourself mm -hmm. and then play it. The or main just, reason I said just, it was because it. one Well go go ahead, Spencer. Sorry. I was gonna say just play it. Don't let someone trash talk your deck and then be like, Oh, well now I can't play this ever again. If someone shit talk my deck. People shit talk my Eosmon every single day. And are on sure. Discord. Are on Discord, they shit talk my Eosmon. Right to my face. And you know what I still do? I still play Eosmon. I still play Eosmon. Mm -hmm. Yo, and yeah, like some people, yo, some people are ruthless <laughs> when it comes to like Eosmon. I know, they just don't like Eosmon and I don't Like, god damn. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, like, that's not going to stop me from playing it. Right? I'm like, sorry you didn't like our video, but go play Jessmon. <laughs> continue playing Jessmon. Continue like, breaking. Continue not like, ever placing top eight. <laughs> That's like, and, and that's another funny thing, because like, I don't know, because, okay, so like, with that video, I basically was talking about my perspective of just one, because in, in a past uh, podcast, I've talked about how I took it to a tournament, the first game, I I think I 2 0 somebody, but then the next four games after that, I kept bricking, mm -hmm. and bricking, and bricking. And then I just lost to, like, I lost to the mirror only because, like, somebody else had, like, the hand of God with that deck and then just ran me over. And then after that, I lost to, like, two jank decks. And I was like, yo, this deck is trash. The hell? <laughs> and then after that, some for some reason, everybody just, like, was just all up on Jessmon's nuts. And then they somehow figured out to make it, like, a little bit less bricky. And then everybody was playing it. Like, I remember I went to, like, a store, or not store championship, but a, uh, uh, an online, uh, tournament. And then I was playing against Jessmon, and everybody had the freaking hand of God. <laughs> and what I mean, the hand, and for those that don't know what the hand of God is, basically, it, like, you have a hand, and then the type of hand you have is almost as if God, like, came in, spread in your ear, and was like, here you go, my son. <laughs> Win for me. Here's all the and pieces. then you just, and then you just get everything, and then you just, like, just clap them. Mm -hmm. And during that period, that sucked because I kept losing to just mine, and just they just they just had the combos just going on, and just freaking just it it it, it was it was insane. It was yeah. insane. <laughs> it was insane. But then afterwards, 
of people started learning that Gabu Bond was the best deck. And that was when a lot of people kind of switched to Gabu Bond, which also kind of sucked for Nationals. Mm -hmm. And I will explain that later on uh, in this video. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yes. The real Supreme deck is Eos Bond. <laughs> Not Eos Bond. <laughs> I oh am goodness. running it in Digifest, and no one can stop me. Oh yeah, that's what you're that's what's playing. That's what I'm playing. Playing Eos Bond. Huh? Okay. A sport because it's my best deck. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> well now, and, and I know, like I know from like the Discord, that's that's like the the deck that you've played, and that's like the what you just said, the most winning deck. But. I want to, and also kind of switch to the, the next topic also. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of... So in two weeks, we're getting set seven. And that's going to implement a bunch of hybrids. Like, anything and everything hybrid-wise is coming out. Now, I know in the past we've uh, done a like a little uh, um, a, a, a look at set seven and whatnot. But this was before, and and quote me if I'm wrong. This was before that you like played the game, and before you like, like at, at the time you did know what some stuff did, but you didn't like fully know like the power that some of the stuff had. Mm -hmm. Am I am I correct on my fair on that? Yeah, yeah. That was. Uh, I mean, I yeah. understood the basics, but I didn't really play. So it was more like, mm -hmm. okay, Isaiah says this is powerful, so it must be powerful. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So now, since you've you, you've been salt and peppered into the the Digimon card game, mm -hmm. I want to uh, see your kind of your new perspective on some of the cards that are uh, coming out. And we probably won't take like a that long to yeah. to look at, but I I do want you to kind of like look through some of the stuff. Yeah, you um, give me the ones you want me to look at, and I'll um, talk about them. I know um, black hybrids. There's a black hybrid in here, right? Yes. Disgusting. <laughs> Black hybrid mixed with D Brigade. Disgusting, yo. Huh. Honestly, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I think the uh, Grumblemon. Yeah. Which is basically a Gumon but just black. Mm hmm Yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. Yeah, D Brigade with um, some black hybrids in it. Can you imagine, yo? That's just like a beefed up rookie rush, and then you get your hybrids on top of your tamers. What? Oh, that's gonna be a problem. Yeah. I, I didn't. Really, yeah, this is this is all new for me. Okay. <laughs> um, I did want to point out. Um, is that another Huckmon. So yeah, the Huckmon. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's the one thing. So it has when attacking, you look at the top five of your deck, and then you can add all cards with Mistermon in their name to your hand. What? Excuse so, me. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I wanted to hear your. So now since you. Know what Jessmon can do and whatnot. I, I wanted to hear your your thoughts. Not on this even Jessmon. What is it? BT eight. We're getting um, all like the Royal Knights and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, X anybody in that too. This is gonna go disgustingly well with all the Royal Knights in it. When you attack, not when it's played yeah. like the old Hogmon. When you fucking attack, and yeah. you get to add all Sistermons, all Sistermons into your hand. Hold up, that says. All sister months. Yep. So if you not if two you sister have... months, all sister months in your hand. <laughs> so that means I can run four CL. I can run four Blanc. I can run four Blanc Awakened or whatever it's called. And I can run four CL Awakened or whatever the shits are called, yo. <laughs> what? And all I gotta do is fucking attack. And it's not even inheritable. Okay. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's funny. Like, imagine swinging in the top five is Sister Mom, like two Sister Mom Blancs, a seal, and then two Sister Mom Awaken Blancs. Mm -hmm. That would be ridiculous. I know. You, you add all, literally all of them to your hand. <laughs> you literally get to add all of them to your hand. It's That's not crazy. like, oh, now, you get to choose two, like the last Huckmon. You on play, you get to choose two between your Huckmons and your uh, Sister Mom. No, this is like, yes. hey, you just drew five uh, sister months. Here you go, add them all to your hand. Take it for free. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's gonna be so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of like the first card that's I that's like originally I feel like we kind of like 
kind of breeze through. Yeah. Um, another card <laughs> is another card that I think would be interesting is the level five Greymon on uh, to your left, yo. What are your thoughts on this one? So um, on play, if you have a tamer, uh, you get the gain two memory. Or if you don't, you get to play a red tamer for free. It is seven. So I mean, I guess that's it's a little balanced. You play it for set. You hard play it for seven. Mm. Um, it's got no security. Yes, yeah, so you have to hard play it. Um, yeah, it's pretty balanced. The two memory is nice. Or you're playing a free tamer, but you are paying seven cost just to play a level five. And then, yes. what's the inheritable effect of him again? Um, when one of mm. your opponents did you want to delete a game one memory? Pretty nice. Um, yes. Now, I don't know how well this would work in this deck, but like low key, you put that in Shoutmon, that'd actually be kind of cool. Put that in Jessmon. Because then, like, I, I mean, yeah, if, if you really want to, I think that would kind of <laughs> help the, the, the bricky aspect of it. Because mm-hmm. um, you can just, yeah, just play that, play a, um, yeah, play that, play Pi. Next turn, Digivolve to Jetsmon, uh, swing, play Blanc, then Digivolve, or then play like Judgment to swing into something with Piercing, mm-hmm. uh, play, or wait, yeah, play Seal, then play Blanc, and then kill something, and was it gain a memory, a gain power, something like that? Yeah, gain one memory once per turn. Uh, yeah. Your turn once per turn when one of your opponents, so only on your turn, not all turns. Yes. Now, the next card I think that we kind of breeze past is the Magna Kidmon. Or Avenge Kidmon, that's what it is, yeah. So, this is part of the D Brigade, or sorry, not D Brigade, but Three Musketeers deck. Um, and this one's a little different than the rest of them. So, when you play this card, you reduce the memory cost by one for each option card. And yours and your opponent's trash. And then you get to return all cards with three musketeers and their traits and all option cards from both players' trashes to the bottom of their deck. And if seven or more cards were returned by this effect, you can delete one of your opponent's Digimon uh, with three musketeers and its traits or with 8,000 uh, DP or less. The 8,000 DP or less is pretty nice. But it also yeah. seems really niche. Unless mm-hmm. you're in like a a three musketeers mirror match, mm. yeah, because that'll because you can just play that bottom deck all of like the three musketeers hard work that they try to do, and then just uh, kill their uh, what is it? Uh, what's her uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Beale Starmon, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or the uh, the blocker, uh, the I, I forgot his name, but it's the the blocker. That's the three musketeers. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with three musketeers. Oh, I know, okay. I know Eli Hill likes it though. Yeah, yeah, Eli likes it. I know uh, who's. I forgot what's what's his name in our Discord. Um, it's not Color Greens. It's. Chase? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot your name, man. Oh my gosh. Chase? I think Chase, yeah. Chase, Chase, Green. Chase yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays three Musketeers? I, I think so. He was... Hmm. The guy that was, that was playing a lot in our Discord, and he has, like, the Gibraltar, like, face and on his, like, uh, on his profile, and it's like... Looks like that. I don't know if that helped. I no. think that's Chase. I think that's Chase. I'm pretty sure that's Chase. Chase, if you're watching this, please confirm. But I know he played a lot of Three Musketeers. And and he also played Jess Mod a bit. And also, shout out to you for helping me uh, train up for Nats. I do appreciate that. Shout out, Chase. Yes. Um, Now, the next card I wanted to look at... uh, Yeah, uh, we can look at Strawby Mod. Yeah, because that card, I think, is going to be... So this is the card that you put in blue hybrid. So with that, you can get a 
uh, you look at the top four, you add either a hybrid, Susanumon, or a Ke- uh, Koji Minamoto uh, to your hand, and then uh, you bottom deck the rest of the stuff. And then, if that Digimon dies, you get to play Koji for free. You just play it, swing, and then hope it dies. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And then, um, also, I think, okay, and uh, just to go back up to red real quick, I low-key think Emperor uh, Greymon, yeah, that car right there, is going to be a sleeper. Mainly because it has Blitz. Mm-hmm. And a lot of, I, it's still, even to this day, a lot of people don't know how to react to Blitz. And especially, in, and with this card, if you if your opponent decides to block, yep, you have to un- suspend and gain a memory. And gain a memory. So imagine, like, you did you all that for four to memory choke your opponent to one? They block, then you like just gain a memory, for or I guess gain a couple memories. Did you evolution cards? Right. Then you unsuspend, and it's still your turn again, so you can swing again. Mm-hmm. That's busted. Disgusting. Yes. Um, what's the the next blue card? I think. Okay. So. Oh Ping yeah. Go, go. So. Well, not Diapimon. I think I think that card is cool, but oh, the level four uh, next to it. Come on now, not that one. There we go. Yeah, Corey Kakumon. Corey Kakumon. Yes, that Wait. card is going to be re freaking ridiculous. Wait, did you evolve this card from your hand onto one of your blue tamers? As it's blue tamer, yes. So it's just a hybrid mm-hmm. card with hybrid in its traits. Or Tommy Himi is in this Digimon's. The G Evolution cards, one of your opponent's Digimon with no GG Evolution cards can attack or block until the end of their next turn. So it's like a a free howling memory boost. In a, in a sense, yes. It's like a howling memory boost for two, mm-hmm. but you don't get the memory afterwards. G but cost that is one, crazy. Three from level three, one from level four. Or two on a tamer. <laughs> Which is crazy. Yeah, so I, this card is going to be in every blue hybrid deck whenever it comes out. Like, can absolutely. Digivolve on, it's a level 4. They can digivolve onto a level 4? Yep. For one cost. Wow. So what, so what I've seen people in Japan do is they will, like, so if you go to the level 4 on the far left, cool. so if they're at, like, 3 memory, they digivolve to their Tamron to uh, this guy. Trash the bottom card of the person's Digimon for, for how many whatever or for just one. Mm-hmm. Then you Digivolve this uh, Kori Kakumon for just one, still your turn, and then you swing, and then you freeze the Digimon that doesn't have any sources. But if you also have Tommy Hemi under it, you can basically do the same thing again mm-hmm. to a different Digimon, which is crazy. Absolutely insane. Yeah. Now, Make another thing, though. Deck. Yes, exactly. Now, another thing, though. So, what blue hybrids typically did in Japan is they would add, um, what was it? What, what's the what's the band card? Uh, Mega Digimon Fusion. So, uh, they could evolve into Sasanomon, uh, like pretty early. Like, I think it'll be like turn like. I think they said like the the mid game, the uh, Bandai said like the mid game or early game that they would uh, do this, mm-hmm. which is insane. But what people are speculating now is that Blue Hybrid is going to just play the uh, the Magna Garurumon, which is the level six at the bottom left, um, instead of that. And like I don't, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Yeah, I want. I wanted to hear your your thoughts about it. Um, you return one card with in his trace when it's Digimon you can put your hand and return one of your opponent's Digimon on the same level as the return card to its owner's hand. Trash all the Digivolution cards of the Digimon. When in fact, as the card to your hand, you may unspin one of your Digimon. That seems broken. So you can combo that with the Curry Kakumon that we just saw. Use that return the Curry Kakumon to your hand, and then. You'll return another level four. Well, actually, you'll just yeah, you'll return another level four and then trash it in your opponent's um, uh, 
board. And then if they have another, pr and if they have another one out there, you can play that Curry Kakumon again, and then freeze it essentially. Um, if they don't have any Digi Evolution sources under it. Yeah, then, the, I, this card is. Then you unspend ridiculous. one of your Digimon, so you can. You can swing, after so you return Curry Kakumon, swing mm -hmm. with that Digimon. Play Curry Kakumon again, unsuspend it, and then swing again with it too, while freezing your opponent's po uh, Pokemon, Digimon. <laughs> <laughs> and his Pokemon on his mind. I know. He's like, I want to play the Legends of Arceus <laughs> right now. Arceus is calling my name. Honestly, me too. But the show must go on. So the show yes. must go on. So now, the next section... Oh my god, Ancient um, Megatheriumon. The biggest name I've ever seen. Yeah, that's a long name. <laughs> um, I think that ha also has to do with, like, trashing Digivolution sources and whatnot, which, like, I don't... So, I okay, what is it? So, uh, if you have a hybrid trash to do from the bottom of each of your opponent's Digimon, and for each Digimon, uh, your opponent draw has with no Digivolution cards, you draw two. So you can draw a lot with this. Yeah. You may and play then, one, when that one, dies, one. you get to play a hybrid. You can play that. You can play Curry Kakumon. Well, you need something under it for its effect to activate. Yeah. But you could play yeah. that. Uh, you could play this one and then put Curry Kakumon on it. Fair enough. Now, okay, so this I, I do want to look at two cards real quick. Just um, so the Pulse one uh, above that. Yeah. So that card, I think, is going to be a little. A little bit crazy. Like, okay, originally I think Pico's gonna be that good, but after watching this video on a DPP channel, uh, shout out to you guys. Uh, yeah, that card is actually gonna be crazy. Now, what that card says is, if you have three security, you get to gain two memory when attacking. Now, it doesn't seem that crazy because, uh, because like you would have to basically like put yourself at uh at three, mm -hmm. and you have to being at three uh security but this is yellow we're talking about so we could like put us down to to three and if we're at like one or two we can easily find multiple ways to uh add up our security back up but then this bulkmon is at the bottom left over here i stand bulkmon while you have three or more security cards this digimon gains blocker Mix it with my what? other Pokemon who gets security attack plus one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. <laughs> so every time you swing with that Pokemon, uh, with that Pulse one, you get two memory if you're at three. Or it could potentially have jamming with the uh, one from BT6. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. But now, the thing that I want to talk about uh, is Jet Sylphimon, which is his level 5 right here, which in my opinion, if if Reinforced Memory Boost didn't get uh, hit, it, it would have been this card. Mainly because when one of your Digimon, so you can, uh, okay, so when one of your Digimon, uh, when one of your Digimon with a Tamer card and his Digivolution cards Digivolves into this Digimon from your hand, reduce the memory cost of this Digivolution by 2. Making this a one cost to Digivolve. Mm -hmm. Now, if you now when Digivolving, if a card with hybrid is in its trait, you get to recover one. So a level five that costs one to Digivolve and recover one. Mm -hmm. And you can Digivolve this. So you can go, okay. So you can go from a uh, Tamer, yeah, Tamer to level four for two, a level five for one. And it's still your turn, and then you can just like swing with it or digivolve to a level six, like afterwards, which is busted. Yeah, now, busted. the card that is going to pair well with this, and I'm gonna do a minor flex real quick, uh, is this Shine Greymon. Uh oh. Now, Shine Greymon is a BT2 card, but basically. It says, when Digivolving, you suspend all your yellow Tamers, and for each Tamer that's suspended, you get to do minus 4,000 power to one of your Digimon. And so, since in this hybrid deck, you're going to be playing a lot of Tamers, mm -hmm. you're going to be 
do, dealing out a lot of power. Or like ne- their negative power. You, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It, it's mm-hmm. going to be crazy. So watch out for watch out for this deck coming up to him. And now the next one I wanted to point out a little bit. It was just green. And I want to hear your thoughts about some of the green hybrid stuff that is in here. Green is dead. Green will never be alive. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let Max DePiro hear, hear you say that. Green is dead. Um, here's one. As if it is level three Digimon for memory cost of two. If the card with hybrid is traits or JP Shib- Shibayama. Spin one of your opponent's Digimon with 6,000 DP or less. I mean, the spinning Digimon isn't really that great unless you can swing into them. And I think with green, most of the time you're just crashing or buying time for big boys to come out. Mm. Now, if we have a level 6 that's a hybrid, then that's disgusting. But I don't think that'll ever happen. Okay, okay. Now, my kind of counter to that is with green, green is always known to, like, suspend, like, your opponent's Digimon, and, like, yes, you can swing into some of, uh, to some of your opponent's Digimon, but also don't forget, in BT6, we have, uh, Petaldramon, that's a level 4, that I think for 3 memory, you can Digivolve into a Tamer, and it has piercing, and I think it's 7k, Mm -hmm. so you could do a lot of stuff, but, Excuse me. Also, we do have a tamer in this set that gives uh, the inheritable of piercing, so that's going to be a, a pretty busted uh, concept, in my opinion. Is it green? Yes. Oh, I've changed my mind. Green has been revived. <laughs> <laughs> now, also, I think he bond Woman, which is level six, right mm-hmm. there, is going to be fantastic. You have to suspend on your opponent's Digimon, and then if they want to unsuspend, they have to discard a card. Oh! I dare you to swing with all your guys, and then like try to unsuspend all of them. You're not going to have a hand. Hand control. I love it. <laughs> yes. Hand destruction. Yes, absolutely. I support. All right. That's going to be great. Maybe I'm, I'm turning a new leaf. You get it because it's green. Anywho. <laughs> but yeah, like you said, Grumblemon, the level four over here, that's going to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of, yeah tough. Like, like, you actually blew my mind with that. Because <laughs> I was not. I did not think about Debergay getting a hybrid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, Debergay keeps shining, like, throughout all like these past couple of sets. Like, it's been ridiculous. Yep, I get a hybrid in my D Brigade now. GG. <laughs> GG. That's going to be the new thing. Oh, man. But also, like, and what, was, uh, I can't talk. What's going to be introduced in this set is a little bit of X antibody stuff, which is going to translate from this set to the basically the set nine where set nine is everything and anything x anybody and that is gonna be crazy i don't know how well it's going to be now but all right (laughs) oh yes eyes one yes got limited before we even got it (laughs) well no it's still gonna be able to be played except in april well yeah I, i think in yeah in april so so we're able to play it all through march but once we get, I believe, set eight is when that's going to be a no-go. Mm-hmm. We talked about Icemon when we went over the ban list. Yeah. yeah that card is busted. Trubion is pretty nice. Um, get to play a Tamer from your trash for free. Uh, and then for each Tamer you have in play, you get to kill a level five, or sorry, level four or lower Digimon oh, wow. on your opponent's field. So you can potentially board wipe, mm-hmm. depending on the on deletion, for each team we have in play, you may play one level three Digimon card from your trash without paying its memory cost. Damn. And you know what the crazy thing about that, though? Do you know, do you remember Lucimon? Mm, yes. It is a level three that's yellow that basically says on play heal one. And with this Cherubimon, it doesn't say a purple level three. It just says level three in general. You're right, it doesn't say. 
<laughs> so, uh... Just start yeah. swinging with Lusamon. Swing? Oh, oh I, I, I heal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then Nidhogmon, that's... Uh... I don't know how good that card's gonna be. I really don't know. You may trash one card in your hand to leave one of your opponents. So, what you can do with this is stack your Lusamons in your hand. <laughs> trash your Lusamons. Get this bad boy out there. Come in with here. Um, I don't know, just trash them for shits and giggles. And then you play all your Lusamons from your graveyard. I mean, from, from your graveyard, from your trash onto mm -hmm. the field, and then you recover four. I think. Possibly. Playing purple. Is that how that will go? Absolutely. Huh. I don't know, but yes. And then the next, so there we do get some white cards. Yeah, Sister Mon Blanc. Mm -hmm. That card is ridiculous. Because on play, you get to put a Sister Mon Blanc from your trash to the bottom of the sources to heal one. And then when it dies, you get to add a Just Mon, Hook Mon, or Sister Mon from your trash back to your hand. Yo, what? Excuse me. <laughs> that's yeah I, just one's getting getting a buff it's, it's gonna be crazy and then with this one you get to add a sister mon seal to the bottom of his sources to uh kill one of your opponents uh digimon with the play cost of five or less and then i believe it does the same thing as sister mon seal you just get mm -hmm. to look for uh you return a sister mon hook mon just mon uh in your hand besides that one uh, back to your hand, which that's crazy. And I was telling, and I was telling my boy, uh, my boy Ryan, a shout out to Ryan, that like, if just Mon, like, and this was before the set kind of got, well, was it before? It was a long time ago. But basically, like before, like ju the only thing that just Mon needed to be a better deck is being able to get your pieces from your trash back to uh, your hand and. Yeah, just one has it now. <laughs> <laughs> and then another thing, we get and, some more yep, Eosmon. All go. of your other Eosmon get plus one thousand DP. Yeah, on deletion, I may play one level five or lower Eosmon from your hand without paying its memory cost. Oh, I cannot wait to get my hands on that card. Yes, Eosmon gets a buff. Yes, yes. That's, honestly, that's literally. I, I feel like, in my opinion, that's literally what, well, at least my deck would. Uh, what it needs to to be better because mm -hmm. like like six thousand power is nice but that seven thousand power that that extra power mm -hmm. is gonna be so nice because exactly. if somebody tries to mecha norium on me welcome and I, yeah <laughs> <laughs> basically <laughs> um also we get these uh we're also gonna get these uh different type of i think they're called like campaign rares um, that Phoenix Mon immediately going to my Phoenix Mon deck. If you have a Tamer, Security Attack plus one, and then if my opponent decides to block me, I get to trash the top card of their security. Disgusting. Huh? That's great. So just having a Tamer, you get Security Attack plus one. Yep, just straight up having a Tamer. And then after that, if it gets blocked, just trash the top card of security. Oh, you want to block me with Mechanori? Oh, you, oh, you want to block me with Cranium, cranium on? Yeah, fuck your Cranium oh. on, yo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah. No. Um, I think... That's another good one. Uh, I know Seraphimon's pretty good. It'll let you uh, heal one. Digisorption minus two. Yeah, so now that turns into a one... To Digivolve, I think. I've never heard Digisorption. Whenever your Digimon evolves into this card from your hand, you may suspend one of your Digimon to reduce the memory cost. Okay, so that's what it does. Yeah, so like... Yeah, so that's why, like, back when green was, like, hella popular, like, Digisorption was, was the thing. Mm -hmm. Like, because you just rest one of your Digimon, Digivolve to the Argomon, and then just swing with the level six uh under it, play a level three under it for free, and then just go off from there. But yes, that card's gonna be nice. Mm -hmm. Cause when did you evolving, if you have a tamer, you get to heal. Oh, and then if it dies, you, you get to heal. That's fantastic. I love it. Yes. Um now these are the tamers 
that are going to be coming out. And the Tommy Hemi, which is the blue one, uh, that card, so that card is the one that pairs with the uh, Koka Kura, Kura, Kurakakumon or something like that. Because mm-hmm. when attacking, until the end of your opponent's turn, one of your opponent's Digimon with no uh, Digivolution cards can't attack or block. So if you pair that with Koka, uh, Koka, 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 whatever. <laughs> Kurikakuban. Yeah, that guy. Um, you get to basically freeze two Digimon with no sources. Uh-huh. Goodness. And then also if you pair that up with the Sora and Joe, you could just like swing with the blue Digimon. Yeah, swing with the blue Digimon. Tap Sora and Joe. Get rid of two sources from, uh, from something. And then just freeze it afterwards and then freeze something else. Are you okay over there, Terry? Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. Don't <laughs> worry about me. Like, your, your mouth burned. Whatever you're eating. That's funny. But anywho, yeah, so that car is going to be ridiculous. Also, the Yellow Tamer is going to make the hybrid deck shine. Because, basically, so, okay, so on play... You get to search your security for a 10 Warriors or a hybrid. And typically in this deck, you're looking for your, like, you'll probably get, like, Jet Sylphimon, Kazemon, or uh, Susanamon. Add it to your hand, and then you just recover one. And then it has the Inheritable. Uh, on your opponent's turn, all of your security Digimon get plus 3,000 power. Mm-hmm. Which sound, doesn't sound like too much, but it, depending on which Digimon you have in there, uh, is is gonna be crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gonna be really crazy. Uh, the Grain Tamer, that's the one that I believe gives your the Inheritable of Piercing. Yeah. Yeah. Also, when this Tamer did evolve into a Green Digimon, reduce the memory cost by one. Hmm. That's great. That is great. Don't uh, like don't sleep on Green. Don't do it. Let's see what kind of buff Deep Brigade would get. Two memory or less, um, set your memory to three. Uh, one play, reveal the top four cards of your deck, add one X, X antibody and its traits among them to your hand, place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. Um, yeah, so this helps out X antibody. Yeah. Not necessarily Deep Brigade. Yeah, not necessarily Deep Brigade. Okay, also, now, I do want to talk about an option card, and it's the one that has the Pulse Mod on it. Yeah, Electric Rush. Main, one of your Digimon gets plus 3,000 power for the turn, and then if you have three security cards, unsuspend one of your Digimon. Don't sleep on this card. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's only a two cost. Yeah, because I'm finna abuse the <laughs> hell out of this card. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be so nice. Um... There's also, oh yeah, and also don't forget we get the secret rares of mm-hmm. Susanumon and Lusamon Chaos Mode. Uh, Chaos Mon is, Mode is going to be fantastic. Because you can, I believe, delete a, yeah, delete one of your opponent's Tamers when Digivolving or on play. And then you get the, uh, or you can kill a level 6 or lower. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Or you know what, you can also, wait, that's a, that's a when Digivolving, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! You know what you can do? Remember the Cherubimon play? Yeah. Where you like if it dies, you get to play uh, the level three Lusamon. Mm-hmm. You heal, then you digivolve to that Lusamon, and you can either kill a Tamer or a Digimon that's level six or lower. That's busted. That is busted. <laughs> yes, I support Susanumon. And that's and then Susanumon, fantastic. It's essentially. Honestly, low key, it really reminds me of the uh, the level six uh, Eosmon that we got uh, in set five. It basically, like kills two or like kills a Digimon when Digivolving, and then it gets like a bunch of security afterwards. The only difference about this is you can Digivolve this on top of a Tamer, and it just so it's an opponent's Digimon. Exactly, and now. The thing about this card, though, is whenever uh, win rate sixty percent is gone, people are going to have to play. Rin- or sorry, no, when 
Mega Digimon yeah. Fusion is gone. Yeah. People are gonna have to play win rate sixty percent. Mm-hmm. Yes. Also, look at these alt arts. Yeah. Oh, I need. I want. Look at that one. Yeah, that looks cool. Oh yeah, all the yeah. Shout out to uh, to Kieran, uh, yeah, Kieran, because I know he's gonna be wanting anything and everything mm-hmm. X anybody from this. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's also, that's Susanumon. Oh, good grief, yo! Susanumon. Eh. Yes. I think how honestly, much, the chase how much card. Do you think this is gonna be that one. Oh, was this the? Wait, didn't we that's do a? Didn't we do? What was the? Oh, I forgot. What was the? Uh, the pod we did where we, uh, said the price for, uh, where we guessed the price for one of the, uh, secret rares. I feel like it was this one. Was it this one? I think so. I don't remember. I'd, I'd have to look back. Yeah. I know we did it for something. I'd have to look back on it. I'm saying honestly. Damn, I, I was actually going to say that. Oh. <laughs> um, I think. Okay, let me think. Like the first week will probably be like three hundred. Mm. Afterward, man. Honestly, I I feel like if it doesn't see a lot of play, it'll probably be like 80 bucks. Yeah. But if it does see a lot of play, I'll go like 160. All right. Someone write it down. Yes, please. (laughs) But yeah, so so now since we looked at all that, what, what are your thoughts on set seven now? I think... I think it's pretty good. Um, Deeper Gate gets a nice buff having a hybrid now. So mm. hopefully we get to see more Deeper Gate. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of a lot of buffs, honestly. Like mm. I like I think and me and my friend was talking about this, but Gabu Bond with uh the new hybrids in it is gonna be ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um what else is gonna be ridiculous? I think like green hybrid and red hybrids are, are is gonna be a sleeper. That's gonna be fantastic. Uh, yellow hybrids is gonna be OP, just because you just get the heal, mm-hmm. and I'm definitely gonna play it because I like Shine Greymon and I like healing. So yeah, yeah, I agree. So yes, um, and then we got top that, eight. Yes, now nationals. I want to talk about the nat. Talk about what happened in nationals. What happened on day two? Top eight. Mm-hmm. Which is low. Were you surprised by some of the by some of the decks that were oh, up here? No, maybe Lord <laughs> Knight doing fourth from Brian do work, but little Luke Seccon and the Bonds should have seen that coming. Yeah, so there's two little Loops, two Seccons, uh, two Gabu Bonds. Wait, yeah, two two Gabu Bonds and Agu Bond piloted Dan by Dan the Man Vang. Shout out. A Lord Nightmon. Mm-hmm. Now, honestly, I'm not surprised by this list because Loki. It looks like what we've seen. It looks like a little bit. Uh, some of the deck. Some of the decks are kind of like. I don't. How do I explain this? It basically is reflected on the other nationals from like Oceania, mm-hmm. uh, Latin America, and uh, in Europe. Because in Europe. Gabu Bond took it, and there were so many Gabu Bonds there. Latin America, I believe Lilithmon took it. Mm-hmm. It was like Lilithmon and uh, security control. Um, and then I think, and I forgot which one, which one it was, but there was a Lord Knight that topped as well. Um, and and people, people do sleep on Lord Knight, mm-hmm. and you, you can't do that because it'll just overpower you, and then you're just gonna be sitting there looking dumb. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think this is to be now, expected. I didn't think we yes. see any D Brigade. I didn't think we see any three musketeers. I didn't think we'd see any of that. Now, yeah, the the three decks I well, okay, I'm kinda shook that D Brigade didn't make it up there. But <laughs> and but I'm not surprised that uh three musketeers didn't pop up. And I'm not surprised that Jessmon didn't pop up. Mm-hmm. And with Jessmon, because as every player or Digimon TCG player knows, it bricks heavy. So you either 
it, it's a high high risk high reward type deck and mm -hmm. it's yeah you, you, the the reward is it's too inconsistent to yeah stack up to these decks is not quite there and then with three musketeers like yes it's it's very good but you also have to realize that ADP is still pretty much a thing. Mm -hmm. And so if like if you fight against a Jessmon player with uh, that that has like ADP Jessmon, or even if they tech the uh, uh, the BT one War Greymon that has basically ADP built into it, you're screwed. Absolutely screwed. So yeah, and honestly, with Lilith Loop being on top eight. I'm not surprised because I think I might have mentioned in, in the podcast or or maybe I just might, might have mentioned it in you while we were just talking. But with how Latin America won, with the Latin American player that won with the little floop, of course that's going to reflect on our nationals because there's a lot of people that love little floop and you know, the Lula Flute player that's been like a diehard fan of Lula Flute, that's like, oh, somebody won Nationals with it? Well, shucks, I'm going to play that. I'm going <laughs> to look at him. Like, I'm going to test and test and test, and then boom, I'm going to play it. I wasn't surprised about that. Um, I think with the Gabu Bond, now, yeah, Gabu Bond, in my opinion, best deck in the format. Mm -hmm. Best deck. Exactly. There's sometimes it can lose, it can brick, just like with any other deck. And but the difference between Gabumon bricking and Jessmon bricking is Gabumon, like if it bricks, it bricks like kind of. But with Jessmon, if it bricks, you're you, you're, you're you're done. <laughs> you might as well scoop. Yes. Um, and then with Agubon, that like okay that that did surprise me. Like the deck surprised me, but the player that played it did not surprise no, me. Because Dan is just a god tier player. Yeah, Dan Vang. Yeah, shout out to you. Because mm -hmm. see, the thing about Dan Vang is that he plays aggressive. Deck. Like with uh, Imperial Jermon, which I, if I remember correctly, that's like his favorite deck of like all time. Like he, like that deck is aggressive because you swing with jamming, you did evolve to uh, another jamming guy. Swing with it. Then you digivolve the Imperial that unsuspends anything with jamming, and then it has jamming itself, mm -hmm. and you can swing twice with it, and then you can just Omnimon uh, Blitz for game. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But with Agubon, it's interesting because it's it's really good in a lot of matchups. Like security control, I believe is good because you get to basically kill one of their Digimon. To trash the top card of their security, which could have been like a Wyvern's Breath or a Ultimate Flare, and then you check the, uh, and then you do two, I think two or three checks afterwards, mm -hmm. and sometimes it'll probably just just be Digimon, so that's fantastic. Um, and then of course it has like a Gunimon and whatnot, so you can just a Goonie GG and whatnot. So that's pretty, yeah, that's 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 pretty good. Mm -hmm. I support. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um. Yeah, and that's that's pretty much what I have to say about about that. Uh, you know, congratulations to those people. Mm -hmm. Congrats, Shout yes. out to all those people. Um, very much so. How was your nationals experience? All right, my nationals experience. Um, and if you've made it this far in this video, hey, welcome. I appreciate it. welcome because this, this is basically the TED Talk portion of this. Part. <laughs> yep, we've been oh, for my an goodness. hour fifteen. Yes, <laughs> and it's probably going to be like 40 minutes more. Well, probably not. I don't know. Anywho, so, okay. So, from my perspective of Nationals, as everybody in my Discord knows, and as even my Discord, my family, <laughs> uh, my friends, my bosses at my job, uh, my supervisor at my internship, everybody knows that Nationals was important to me. And I was doing everything and anything I can to like mentally prepare, like mentally prepare for it. Like if I lost a game, I knew what I could like, how I could basically get me out of that funk to where I could like perform afterwards and whatnot. 
everybody knows how important this was. And a month ago, I decided, I I, I low key decided that I was going to play Gabu Bon for Nationals. Now this was like during kind of like the the uh, and, I, and from what I was saying this earlier, like when uh, Jessmon was at like its peak of like of like oh everybody was like playing it. This was at like the the like the climbing point, uh, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And so I decided to like I mentally was like, yo, I'm probably just gonna play the Gobble one in in nationals because like you get the bottom deck three things, you get to just hammer spark and swing for for game and whatnot. You can just do like a bunch of stuff. I was like, okay, this is what I'm gonna play. But also in the back of my head, I was like, uh. Eh, I feel like you're making a rash de- decision. So let's like let, let's do some more research. Let's figure out what other decks are are out there in the meta. And who knows? Maybe somebody will like maybe bring out like a deck that is just like crazy and insane, and will just like completely like destroy the meta. And that'll probably be you'll what you'll play in that or whatnot. So I was like, okay, me, I'll do that. I'll hold off. And I'll 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 mess around with stuff and and see what's what's going on. So then, like a week after that, I was like, okay, I'm just go. I'm just gonna play Gabu Bon. I'm, I'm just gonna play the the what. Uh, so I played. So originally, I played the Pepsi version, which basically has a uh, Tai Kamiya uh, in it to give all your Digimon a thousand power, but mainly you use it so you could play uh, a delicate plan. And also Lightning Joust, which, oh my god, that card is insane. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in Gabu Bon, oh my gosh. Like, being able to swing three times, bottom deck three things, and swing for two security? Mm-hmm. Busted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely busted. So that was what I was piling, piloting for a while. Until I play, I play tested it in one of my local tournaments. And... It was a it was a three round tournament. It wasn't like that many people that was there, but there were excuse me, but there all the people that I was playing either had their invite or got really close to getting their invite. So, so it was pretty big competition. So I played round one. Uh, I think it was like a three musketeers player. Uh, I beat him. I think in like three games. The second game. I played it against uh, a Gabu Bon player, um, and I ended up 2 0 him. And of, co- of course, and uh, I don't want to speak for everybody, but whenever I 2 0 somebody, I feel good, especially the mirror match, which I figured was going to be happening at nationals. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I made the great choice. This is fantastic. Then I played against Gabu Bon in the last round. And I got clapped. <laughs> Absolutely clapped. And with that match, that really opened my eyes to where, like, yo, my deck is not that good in the mirror. And the only reason I won the last game was because I got lucky. Mm-hmm. Like, wow. Because, like, Octomon it was OP. I didn't have Octomon on my deck at the time. Um,. Oh, what was it? Uh, I think the I think he had like Kakaitis breath. No, he had a uh, what was it? Uh, Absolute blast. That's what he had. He was able to just like bottom deck my stuff, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh my god, my eyes are open. <laughs> it's time. I've been playing this for so long. I got to make this just straight out blue. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna do that. Now, during this tournament, or. Er, no, okay, yeah, during this tournament and a tournament the week before, there's this guy named Logan. And shout out to Logan. Shout out to you. He played an EO spawn deck that I've kind of seen, but he added some different stuff to it. And when I tell you that he 2 owed the fuck out of this guy at my locals, <laughs> that shit was inc- incredible. I was like, yo, EO spawn. <laughs> yeah, EO spawn. Finally, my it preaching just, had been heard. It, it just beat the deck that was like, that basically everybody just gawked over. Like, what? 
oh my gosh, I'm intrigued. I literally like, like as I was playing, I think in like the the week before, I was like playing. I was also watching him at the same time. This is how he how he did, and he played some cards that I didn't kind of agree with. But like also in my head, I was like, hmm, okay, if this was that card, he would have had a better matchup, huh? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do that. So, and everybody in my well, not in my Discord, in, in our Discord. <laughs> sorry, it's yours now. <laughs> everybody in our Discord has known that I, I was playing the heck out of, and I, I still am playing the heck out of uh, EOS One. Yeah, you shit stole um, me with it that one time. <laughs> <laughs> that was pissed. Like, that deck was brutal. And then also with win rate sixty percent, oh my gosh! You're telling me I don't have to pass turn to beat the hell out of my opponent? <laughs> oh, fantastic! I love it. And so I was, I was torn. I was like, "Do I?" Okay. And also, I played. Uh, in, uh, also, more note on my experience with this EO spawn deck. Like I played against the, against Jets one. I was two zero in it like crazy. Now, against Gabubon, that was tough. Because if I played the level 4, I basically would let my opponent play Matashita for free, which sucked. Or Davis for free, which also sucked. Or my Manila. And then... I think I did beat you one match with my Bond. I'm pretty sure you did, yeah. I can't remember, though. But you, I mean, you you annihilated my Jessamon deck. <laughs> <laughs> And, like, see, but that's the thing, because, like, against, like, Goblin One, like, if they do bring Bond out, they're bottom decking your Eosmons. And with the Eosmon deck, you either need Eosmons in your hand or in your trash, and mm. not at the bottom of your deck. So that sucks. And then in my head, I was like, well, Goblin Bond's going to be everywhere in Nationals, so if I fight that, I'm just going to be true. I was going to be screwed. Yeah. Oh. And then I think I played against like I think like a little flute player or something like that, and then they just like screwed me with that, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm all right. I'm gonna go back to the Gabu Bond and then just figure it out from there. So afterwards, and this was like I think a week before nationals. Uh, shout out to Michael, Graham, Bobby, and my boy Ryan. Because we were playtesting like crazy. <laughs> and my boy Ryan was playing just one. And besides him and the people on our Discord and Spencer, the only people that I won't say anything if they play just one. <laughs> besides that, unless if you're just a hardcore just one fan, I won't say anything else. But if not, then, yeah, no, I'm saying something to you about it. There's but, a reason it didn't top eight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that, was, and that was another thing I was very torn about whenever I was uh, talking to Ryan about, like, decks and whatnot. Because, like, so he he mainly picked Just One because that was the deck he's played with most. And like I mentioned in the past podcast, if there's a deck that you've played the most and you feel comfortable with, play that in that's. Mm -hmm. But also, I was like, man, like, I, I don't know if you're going to make it up there, bro. <laughs> I, I don't. But to uh, fast forward a little bit, he made, I think, top 126. Oh, nice. Which, he top hey, 128. -ed. Heck yes. Congratulations. You'll love this. Congratulations. Yes. So, but yeah, so back to like my preparations. I was playtesting, playtesting mainly against the mirror. Because I felt like that was gonna be, excuse me, where I was gonna find like my main hiccups at. And at first I wasn't winning, but then I got to the point to where I was like kind of even, and so that's where I feel comfortable at. Because if I was at even, uh, because yeah, if I was at even with it, then I know what my outs are and I know how to like beat my opponent and whatnot. And then, yeah, the week of Nationals, I literally played Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, training, mm -hmm. hardcore training, putting in the necessary work, 
just so I can potentially like I didn't I didn't think I was gonna win that, but I wanted to play at least to I wanted to play day two at least. Mm-hmm. And that, that was that was my goal. Then on Friday, I chilled out. Because I felt like if I played if I played more on Friday, I would have probably like Digimon scrambled my brain out out of the <laughs> So I took a break that day. I did watch like a couple of videos of like some people playing just to kind of do like not just like research, but mainly like watch it for fun mm-hmm. and whatnot. Then Saturday, the day of nationals, I had my snacks. I woke up early. You want to know what song I listened to in the shower that morning? Chief Keef. Chief Keith Fonito. Yes. Yes. I was banging that like crazy. And then oh, who was who else I was listening to? Uh doesn't matter. You had Chief Keith on. So yeah, I had need. Chief I had somebody else. It was oh, I was playing them certified hood classics. Fantastic music. And then I went to uh uh I went to uh whose house was it? Uh uh Mike and Tim's house. Shout out to the boys that synced up podcast. Went up over there to use their setup. I had all the stuff, and then I joined my friend Ryan in our in the Discord, and we were both hyped. We was like, "Yes, let's go. We know what we need to do to achieve our wins and whatnot. Let's freaking get it." And then, um, so the thing about Nats was that you were select, so you were placed in two different servers. You were either placed in the TAC server, which was also like the Digimon main server, or you was put in the core TCG server. Now, me and Ryan got placed in the core TCG server, which I was, okay, I was mad, but happy about for two reasons, but for a reason each. I was mad because me and Ryan shared the same server, so there was a likelihood that we was able to uh, play against each other. And I would have been pissed if I was, like, the reason or if he was the reason for one of us to not make it to day two or not make it to, like, top 32 or whatnot. Like, I, I would have been, like, that That wouldn't have sat right with me at all. <laughs> and then, um, and then also, the thing I was, ha- so the thing I was happy about that I was in the core TCG server was all the sweats was intact. Izzy Cruz was in there. Uh, I think uh, uh, Dan Vang was in there. Um, I think I don't think Apache was in there. Uh, no, Apache was in core. Um, who else was in there? But basically, all like all the, the really like. Muted. Oh yeah, your mic's. <laughs> oh okay. <laughs> I said True Champ was in there. Yeah, True Champ mm-hmm. was in there. Who else was in there? Um. It's- there's a lot of content creators and a lot of like really good competitive people in there. And I was like, Oh, and then also uh, my friends, Bobby and Eastman was in there. So I was like, Oh my God. RAP. Yeah. <laughs> shout out Bobby. Yeah. Shout rookie, out rookie rush player. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, so that was, so it kind of like relieved me, but it also made me a little bit nervous uh, a little bit. And so then the first round came in. Now, the first round came in, and I was, remember I was playing Gobble Bond, but my opponent was also playing Gobble Bond. And now, I don't, I, I don't remember the guy's name, but I can tell, and I'm not trying to disrespect anybody at all, but with the way that he played, and the way that he would communicate when we were playing, it seemed like that he recently acquired that deck and was kind of like... Unfamiliar with it. Un- he was unfamiliar with it, but he knew that it was basically Gabu Bon Gober. Mm-hmm. So, like, when it came to, like, the certain, like, skill aspect to it, like... I'm not sure if he knew what that was to a degree. <laughs> but uh he ended up uh beating me. We took it to uh, game three. Um, but he ended up beating me. And when I tell you, 
Game three, this man had the hand of God. It was ridiculous. And game two and game three, I was struggling to get my to get some of my pieces. Like I was able to search for them. Mm-hmm. Like I had the the EXL one Gabumon under like Ikakumon, and I was able to like swing into his Madoki Betamon or his like other Gabumon or whatever, and then like search for pieces. I wasn't getting anything. I kept getting like Tamers, maybe a Gabumon, but not Gabubon itself. And then like whenever I think the last card I drew before the game ended was Gabu Bond, and I was like, well, I don't have like I don't have enough memory. I, I think it was either I didn't have enough memory, or even if I went to it, like I think he played uh, Ice Wall on me, so I couldn't have mm-hmm. uh, game anyway. And um, now I did have, and that's a so also a uh, slight tangent. I am going to do a deck profile on the deck I played for Nats, uh, because I felt like that this was like a perfect counter. The Gobble One, and it was to a degree, but like not quite, because I played Mimi uh, Tachikawa, mm-hmm. which is this cost tamer, which basically says anytime a player uh, uses an option, you can rest it to uh, gain a memory. So if they try to play Hammer Spark and gain a memory, I can just rest it and be like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. If you they, spark. right? If they like, if they're at like one. Or what is it? If they're at, no, if they're if they play like Ice Wall and they put them uh, themselves to zero, I can just tap uh, tap Mimi to pass on my turn. If I have Davis, I'll just go to three, and then just like kind of go off after that and just basically make them waste their turn. Mm-hmm. And that's what I was. That's what I was doing. That was with a lot of the games I won. That was mainly how I was winning with, with the Mimi combo, or using it on myself to make Hammer Spark cost two. Or potentially three for uh, to get three memory for free, mm-hmm. or to reduce the cost of uh, ice wall by one, which is great. Um, yeah, but with this round one match, uh, yeah, I was just struggling to find my pieces, um, and then he ended up uh, taking it. Then after that, the next two rounds was probably my hot, like my top performing rounds, very top. Round two. I played against security control. And in my head, I was like, oh, this is easy money. <laughs> easy. We take those. And now I was a little like hesitant because um oh I, I guess I didn't I don't remember if I finished my statement on that. But like I mentioned, I switched from Pepsi Gabubon to regular Gabubon with the Mimi Tech. So if I hit anything in security like a on uh, like a Wyvern's Breath or maybe like a Holy Wave or something, they were able to do that free range. Mm-hmm. So I just had to kind of get lucky. And I basically like, I set up my board and whatnot to where like, okay, if like they're at like four security, if I can get Dabu Bond out and whatnot, I could just swing, tap Mimi, Hammer Spark uh, to go to two, swing Lobo GG. And that's what I did. For like game one, fantastic, felt good. Game two, I think I just freaking just like kendo him or lobo him to death or <laughs> something like that, and I I felt good, a solid two zero victory. I was one one. Mm-hmm. I was like, yes, we're we're doing it. We're we're getting back up there. Let's go. Now round three. I don't know what I played against. Just one. Yes. <laughs> I played against just one. And in my head, I was like, oh, I have to win this game. Mm -hmm. Because if not, every just one player is going to just like roast me afterwards. (laughs) Like, absolutely. And you know what I did? I 2 owed the fuck out of him. So fuck just one. Yes, I'll say it to all all, all you sweaty just one players that the the competitive ones, not the ones that like love just, that have like a. To all you, of you, you know who you are. Players. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I two of the hell out of him. And I felt so good. Like, game one, I think he hard played a, a, a Bow Hook one. And I was like, ooh, five memory? Yum, yum. I'll take those. <laughs> yes. And then I think I, uh, what did I do? Uh, what was it that I did? 
I can't remember. I think I swung into it with uh oh yeah with uh what's his name uh Ikaku one and I felt so good because mm-hmm. even though it died, I was still able to get my pizzas. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna just build up some more. Bob the Builder, boom, 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 and then just swing and got game. That was great, fantastic. Now, round four was kind of like the was 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 probably the, the beginning of whenever I went into my my, my madness <laughs> per se. So I played against Hexablau. It was a Hexablau and uh, a Old Force Vidramon deck. Hmm. So I was like, okay, so he's probably like a big fan of Hexablau and whatnot. And I've played against Hexablau before, and I've had terrible times with it. As much as I love the deck, as much as I love being able to have Hexablau on the field and just like basically like freeze your opponent's Digimon, which is great. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, this is easy because all I just have to do is just have sources under it. Now, after I made that thought, I was like, oh no, I hard play a lot of my Digimon. If he gets that out, I'm kind of screwed. But game one, uh, he kind of bricked a bit and I kind of took over, which I was like, okay, okay, this is fine. This is fine. Now, game two, he had Aero Vidramon uh, out on the field, which is a level five that has jamming, mm-hmm. which sucks because even if he swings into my Octomon and security or even into a Gabu Bond, he's not dying. So he's just going to be there. And I didn't have anything in my deck to deal with that except for Octomon. And I think the turn before, before that, I think I swung into his security and I died to something. Mm-hmm. So if I had a way to bring that bring that Octomon back out and just digivolve it and swing, I would have definitely done that 100%. But sadly, he just kind of just... Uh, just just punched me with it, and then he did you off to a zoo or not a zoo long, but a uh hexablow, and then uh I think since he had like eight cards in his hand, he was able to swing for two checks, which I was like, oh, well, okay, uh, ice wall or hammer spark, whatever is not going to help me. What I needed was freaking howling memory boost to get rid of his sources and freeze his hexablow, mm-hmm. but couldn't do that, so. It was tough. And then game three, he basically just run me over with uh uh with what's his name? Um Aero Vidramon and then I yeah, I just lost. Mm-hmm. And that was uh, I was tough. And I I was yeah. Like I felt bad because like Hex so the thing about Hexablow, you can make an argument that it's a one point five uh rated deck, but like low key it's more of like a tier two deck. And as we know, Gabumon is probably like tier one and at sometimes maybe tier zero. So for that to be the Hexablow deck, or for sorry, for Hexablow to be that type of deck, I was pissed. <laughs> I was like, yo, there is no way I just got slashed by Hexablow. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, whatever. It's I, I still have a chance. I am only I think at that point I was, yeah, I was 2 2. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. Uh, I'll just keep pushing. Then round five hit, and I played against Gabu Bond again. And I was playing against a player who definitely knew what he was doing. And yeah, he ended up 2 0 me. Mm-hmm. And at that point, I was very upset. And I was very dumb mentally. And basically, I was upset because what, for, for those that don't know, that didn't know during the tournament, to be able to play day two, you needed to be X and two. And since this was a, I believe, a nine round tournament, you basically needed to be uh, seven and two. So the fact that I lost my third game, I was like, wow. I I can't I I can't make it to day two. Like I'm like that I was that was the main goal I had 
mm-hmm. and I failed at it. And I was like, I, I was, I was pissed. And my boy Ryan, he was, I think he won that that round, and he was, or no, he also lost that round. So he was, but I think at that time he was like, so this was round five. So I think he was like three and two. Yeah. So I was like, well. Yeah, this it, this sucks. Okay, um, I, I guess I'll keep playing. I, I guess there, there's still top 126 prizes that I can get, so I'm a, uh, I'm I'm gonna try. Yeah, mm-hmm. a, a shoe for it. And so it was round six. Now round six, I was like, at the beginning, I was trying to tell myself to lock it in, but it was very hard to lock it in knowing that I'm basically playing for almost nothing. And and and, and what I mean, and I'm saying that because this is my perspective of, of, of this tournament. Mm-hmm. For those that are like, oh, you're not playing for nothing. <laughs> but to me, I was basically almost playing for nothing. So I started, so the guy who was playing, I was playing against had, uh, he was playing a little flute. And so I was like, okay. I was a little nervous because, like, with the new build I had, I wasn't able to play against a uh, Lilith Loop or any form of purple mm-hmm. at that time. So I was like, uh, like, I know what you're going to do, but I don't know how my deck will interact with that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, we'll just, we, we just got to try. And then game one, he actually scooped because he was bricking very hard. I was like, yes, okay, let's get it, let's get it. There's still a chance. Let's go. Game two, he pulled off the combo like crazy. And for those that don't know with Lilith Loop, like what type of deck Lilith Loop is, if you've played Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, and if you played against any like maybe like a Sky Striker deck or like an Eldritch deck or any like Honestly, any like mainstream Yu-Gi-Oh deck, they basically take forever and a day to do their freaking turn, mm-hmm. and then after that, they're just like, "Here, here's my board state. You can't really do anything about it. Your turn." And so the second game couldn't really do anything about it, and I just, I was lost. And at that time, I was like, "Oh my gosh, no! I need to, I, ah, oh, I need to get in, please. Come on." I this this is my last chance to get something out of this, and then afterwards. So okay, so I I made probably one of the biggest, most I would say probably like how do I explain this? Like I made the most like beginning mistake that I've ever made. And I've never made this mistake before. Mm-hmm. And so to understand the mistake, so whenever me and my opponent cut, I throw my opponent to do half and then the top six. Because typically some people would do, is like they'll do like half and seven, or like half and five. And they'll always do like odd numbers. And if you're playing in like webcam events, you have to like watch out for cheaters. And so they'll kind of, like, stack their deck in a way that's, like, oh, if he, like, halves and fives me or half and sevens me, then I'll just, you know, just mm-hmm. shuffle my stuff to where I can get the perfect hand, like, that way. So I said half and six because it was an even number, and typically people don't do even numbers. So he said that, well, so I told him half and six, but he also told me half and six. So in my head, like, after I was, like, cutting it, I was like, okay, half. Half and six, half and six. Now, when I messed up was when I was setting up my security, I accidentally dealt myself six, uh, six security instead of instead of five. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize this until I think my second turn uh, after I passed with them. And then in my head, I was like, because I, I think at that time I didn't have like the best hand, but I had a decent hand to where I could kind of like make like a comeback Mm -hmm. and then i was like sitting there and i was kind of kind of doing like when i'm doing that i was just sitting there looking at 
uh, the person on Discord. And then I was looking at my board. And then I was like, yo, something ain't right. And then I count my security. And I was like, oh my God, I built myself sick security. Now, at that point, I could have, like, if I was if I was a scumbag, I could have easily, like, not said anything mm-hmm. and just, like, kept playing. Yeah, but that's, but that's being a scumbag. Yeah, but I, I'm not a scumbag. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. And I will never win in that type of scummy way. And nor do I want to be, like... Like, uh, what, what's the word? Like known as that guy. Yeah, known mm-hmm. as the the guy that put six security in their thing and like and still lost or won or whatever. Yeah. Like, like I didn't want. So I told my opponent, "Hey, I accidentally sent myself six security. How do we handle this?" And then he was like, "I think we should just call judge." So we called the judge. I told him the situation, and then he basically said that he that uh big at the beginning of the tournament they talked about situations like this and they'd agreed that if you set yourself an extra security then that counts as a game loss Mm. and when i heard that and keep in mind this was game three yep so basically what he just told me was i just lost and i lost the i lost the game i lost the match and basically now i'm two four and like and when I get pissed, I, okay, I wasn't like, like, I was pissed, but I was mainly pissed at myself, and I I didn't tell that person GG, I, I didn't say anything, I was like, okay, thanks, Judge, and then I just, like, just disconnected from the thing, mm-hmm. and then after that, I was just, I, I, I was very upset, and I basically dropped from the tournament, I was like, yeah, I've, I've had enough of this. And whatnot. Looking back on it now, I think if I was to do it again, I if I was to go back to that situation again, I would maybe play one more round. Mm-hmm. But knowing my mentality, depending on if I would have won or not, I don't even like even if even if I won, I don't think I would have continued afterwards. Because at that point, I was basically like two and four. And there was no way I was going to get top 150 something because I think like round three, I was like 156. Mm -hmm. But then I lost and I went down to like 180 something. And then, and then after, since I lost again, I was definitely going to be like 200 or something. And it's very hard to go back up in rankings when you have such a big deficit um, Mm -hmm. with losing. So, yeah, I just left. And I told my boy Ryan, like, hey, yeah, I just dropped up for the tournament. And I hope you uh I wish you the best. And then I was, yeah, I was I was just done. And yeah, after yeah, I I was very down bad after that. <laughs> very down bad. And I'm not gonna lie, I it's it still kind of hurts to this day. It, it it still hurts. Yeah, I think you I put in with, uh, the one word responses on text messages. I was like, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and that's the and it's, it's actually funny because that's when because that's the thing that my girlfriend uh, notices that when that depending on the the thing I do or something like if I'm very like mad about it and if she like texts me I'll just do like one word responses because mm-hmm. like I don't because like I don't want to like blow up because I would rather just like just be like one worded. Mm-hmm. And just like get straight to the point, as opposed to like, like if he was like, "Hey, how the tournament go?" I would just say like, "It, it didn't go well," as opposed to like, Are "You fucking kidding me? Fuck this shit! Absolutely not! Fuck no! Oh!" And then just get all, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, yeah, no. So, um, oh, where was I going with that? <laughs> um, yeah. So, and and during that, yeah, and and during my. My 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 down bed, uh, I guess period. My like, not not necessarily like my love for the game because I I love Digimon and there, there's nothing that'll get me to quit. Mm-hmm. But I was at the point to basically, like, I would like, 
like y'all y'all can see me like set eight because <laughs> yeah. I, I I just want my Vmon stuff. Mm-hmm. I I I I do not care. I don't want to go to no to no locals and deal with more Desmonds and more like whatnot. I no mm-hmm. nope. And it took me a bit to get out of that mindset. Mm-hmm. And like now, usually in situations like this, like I tend to be a positive guy. So when some things do happen, I try to like mentally tell myself like, hey, like, like, even though you didn't get a dub in this area, you still have a bunch of dubs like elsewhere. And when and I think like a couple, yeah, it was a couple days ago, I walked in from my internship and I was looking around my room and I saw a. yeah, Eosmon. I saw this deck box. The light of Eos One. I saw no, not Eos One. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that deck box. I saw this other deck box that's over there, and I saw this Omnimon deck box. And the the key things, or the not the key things, but the like the main reasons I point these this deck box out is because at my locals. The only way that you can win those, unless if, well, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the only way that you can win those is if you get first place in your locals. And I have one, two, three, four. I think you sent me one. Five. Yeah, and I sent Mm -hmm. you one. I've sent my buddy Ryan one. Like, I have a lot of these. Mm -hmm. So, I, so, like, and I was I was very like hard on myself, but I didn't need to be that hard on myself because I'm a great player, very good. Mm-hmm. I'm good. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely, you are a phenomenal player. You kick my ass all the time. Um, <laughs> sometimes you kick my ass so much that I throw my deck. <laughs> I, <laughs> I threw my Jessmon deck that one time against your fucking Eosmon deck. Yeah. I was Wait, so did you? Good. Yes. I oh remember. yeah, I remember. I was like, "Yo, <laughs> fuck Jessmon, I never played it again." <laughs> oh my god, yeah, I remember. Yeah, you're a fantastic that. player, and I mean, there's times oh. where you win some, and there's times where you lose some, and that Saturday was just not your day. Um, yeah, Usman just did not want you to have the pieces. So I don't know what it was, <laughs> um, and then it, just dealing yourself like you have that mentality of like, okay, it's half and six, and then you. You're like half at six, and then it's like, okay, I need to deal with my security. Accidentally deals at six. I mean, that was just incredibly unfortunate luck. That was nothing yeah. against you, and you had you had the balls to be like, hey, yo, I dealt myself six security. What do you want me to do about it? And you took it in strides. The judge was like, hey, yeah. you, hey, you know that counts as a loss. Unfortunately, you did that. Um, and you're like, okay, well, I'll accept defeat like a man, and not try to cheat like a scumbag. And I mean, I respect that. I really do. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Wait, one second. I need to plug in my laptop because it oh. is getting a little low. Uh-oh. Oh. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hi, an hour and 53 minutes Don't into the podcast. It. I had to plug out my Switch. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, cool. We're good. We're good. We're good. And we're back. Hey, yes. And, like, another thing that... And it was actually funny. So, like, my... Uh, okay, so, for those that don't know, I intern at a university, and I'm basically counseling uh, the students that, that, uh, that go to that university. And I had a supervising meeting in which I talked to my supervisor about, you know, like, some of the clients and what's been going on in, in our sessions. And also, uh, at times, about, like, what's been going on with me. Because, mm-hmm. basically, like, I need to be at a good level before I can see, you know, other clients. Because if I'm, like, sitting there, like, yeah, I'm sorry that happened to you. That's that's tough. Then they're going to look at me like, hey, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 I, I, I mean, I'm coming for you to help. Mm-hmm. And you're not helping. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're moping around. Do I need to counsel you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
man, I lost in Digimon. Get out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> I'm balding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so I talked to my supervisor about it. And at, at that time, I was feeling, like, a little bit better. But uh, she was like, like, yeah, like, I, like, I understand how much that's, like, important uh, to you and whatnot. But you also have to take into consideration about all the other stuff you're doing. Like you're a um like you're you're a graduate student, you're about mm-hmm. to graduate this semester. Mm-hmm. Um your birthday's you, coming up. Yeah, birthday's coming mm-hmm. up. You made it another year. Yes, you got like you played on multiple tournaments to get your nationals invite. So you worked hard for it. Mm-hmm. So you've like actually like like you put in the time, the dedication to get there, and you you know what you're doing. So like basically, don't sell yourself sell yourself short. Oh, say that like eight times fast. Goodness. <laughs> um, so I was like, yeah, you know what? Yeah. And then a uh, funny thing about it, and uh, I actually so I haven't played any Digimon since that day until Today. like. Yeah, until today, mm-hmm. uh, as a time of recording, and that that out, out, that was some that was some fun matches. Uh, shout, out to John. shout out to John. Shout out to um uh uh, oh, oh, uh Ben. Yes, sorry, mm-hmm. Ben. Sorry, Ben. Yeah, shout out to you. Thank you for for playing some matches and and also kind of re reviving my Digi spirit. And now you're ready to play in our tournament next week. Yep, I yep. sure am. Let's go. Yeah. I think it's just um, it's like a rest period. Like you just need a little mm. break, um, collect yourself. And it was like I told you when I texted you. I was like, "Well, there's always next time." Right. And I said, "This is just one tournament, and there's always plenty more tournaments to win." And, oh uh, yeah. And uh, at nationals next time you participate in nationals, um, hopefully the meta is a little bit different, and we have a lot more consistent decks um, yeah. instead <laughs> of. Instead of these decks where either I build a house or I win in one turn. Um, yeah. 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 So yeah, there's always next time. And you're a great player. There's no doubt about it. I mean you have trophies to show it. I have a trophy sitting on my table that you <laughs> earned. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. And, and um, now the last thing I kinda want to talk about with Nationals is something that one of my friends uh, asked me actually, was nationals worth it? That's a big question. Mm-hmm. I mean, so to this. originally, I would have been like, oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, worth it. But if you think about it, and this is just for the North American nationals, to get the basically get into it, you had to uh, get your invite. Now, with that, to get your invite, you need to play in either a online regional or a store championship. Now, for me, for, for me specifically, I played in store championships, which cost like about 12, maybe like 12, uh, I think like ar- around 12 to 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. To, to... Do you get participation prizes? Yes, you do get mm-hmm. participation prizes, which I'm pretty much certain that that was what you were basically paying for was participation prizes. Mm-hmm. And they probably so, like a couple of dollars extra. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then you play in that, and then if you may, like if you win the uh, the store championship, then you get your invite. But if you don't, then uh, you'd either have to wait until uh, they play in the next nationals, which for my case was the day afterwards or uh like i think like a month afterwards or like two weeks D- depending on where how, how your locals go so and again for my case i played in uh i think i played in like four national or sorry not nationals four store championships so i spent if we're going with the 20 bucks i spent 80 bucks to get my invite essentially mm-hmm and I did get my invite. Yep. And then with getting your uh so with your invite, you also had to buy basically your ticket 
and to nationals, which was 30 bucks. And it sold out fast. Yes. Like I, sold had, to, out I had to buy your ticket late. for you because you were participating in a tournament and couldn't like stop the turn. Yeah. <laughs> which I'm also very appreciative yeah. uh, for you for that. And very much like, low. Uh, like I got all this info. <laughs> I stalk yeah. him enough. <laughs> <laughs> I stalk him enough. <laughs> Goofball. <laughs> but yeah, and so that's about like 110. Mm-hmm. Uh, 110 per se. So then, yeah, so you uh, so you basically play 30 books to get in to, for more participation uh, packs as well as potentially more packs if you get 120 or 125 or um what you call it or like top 32 and and, and up there and then when you play in nationals you're playing against oh like like against the best players like around your region the people that and in north america yeah mm-hmm. and there's like and, and another thing I noticed was that the player base kind of ranged from like people who were like, "Oh, I got my invite. Oh, okay, I I guess I'll play in it." To other people that were like, "Oh yeah, I knew I was gonna get my invite." Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah, and and there's a, a different play style between b- between the two, and playing for nine rounds which is basically nine hours for the first day. And if you make it to day two, if you do that, then you have, then to my understanding, you had to play for, I think, six, at right? least like six, yeah, six, six or, or seven, seven rounds. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, like... So you're playing so like minimum nine plus, like 15. Yeah. 15 so you're playing, hours in two days. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You're playing Digimon for 15 hours. Now, with that, you also have to keep in mind, excuse me, that there's going to be cheaters in this tournament. And as we Yes, and as we saw from that guy, Mm -hmm. I forgot what his name is, but yo, fuck that. Let me look him up. I will name drop him right now because fuck that. Holy shit. Yo, you were that blatant with cheating, bro? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This man fucking picked up a what what was that card? Um, I have that card. You just it was to uh, delete one of the other Pokemon. Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Here's his name, Cody mean? Barker. <laughs> Cody Barker. Yeah. His his number is four two three eight two five five. Bro, you're wow! Yeah. Like you're ridiculous. Yeah. This man literally was scumbag. like picked up a security, added that one card to the security, and was like, "Oh yeah, is this card delete something?" And if that one guy wasn't streaming, oh my gosh, on, I don't here know. We go, here we go. We can view it. Actually, yeah, yeah. Let, 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 let's watch it for let's watch for, it. for the world to see. If you don't mind sharing your screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Screen one. Do that. Do that. Do that. Yeah. Do that. Do that. Uh huh. Got a cr- yep. cr- Chrome back up. Chrome back up. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. Wait a minute. Oh, sorry. Technical difficulties. No. Oh, good there. No. No. Oh, not that one. Nope, nope. Oh, oh. Where is it at? Oh, my Hello? God. Hello? Oh. Aha. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, boy. Uh. <laughs> uh. No. Oh, no. Here it is. Please. Here it is. Yeah. All right, all right. We got it. We got it. We got it. We're Gucci. Google. Gucci Done. for clubs. Boom. Uh-huh. Right, we got that. Yes. Who can't uh, unsuspend? All right, so oh, here's, here's, the, here's the full watch video. Watch this asshole. Yeah. Cody Barker is this guy right here in the yellow. Is that Zypher? Now, first of all, he's on his phone. So yes. you're already fucking disrespectful. Uh, sitting there on your phone while playing. That man um, said, meh, I'll just play. Yeah. I don't care. Already fucking disrespectful. Yeah. Watch, like, watch this guy. Okay. Uh, 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 Transcendent Sword, that's what the card. Mm-hmm. He's playing just one. The and the then... Block. And this the guy dude's... clearly calls out, I want to send the Blanc to the bottom. Yes. He grabs the, Seal and the, tries to... No, the block, the block here. Tries the oh, bottom oh, shit, shit, Absolutely shit, not. Shit. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. You put that back there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they checked, oh, and it's a Huck one. Again, bottom deck, the, uh, and then he, then picks he swings up. again. Yep. Look at that! Yo, okay, re- rewind that. There you go. Quick. Right here, he drops the Huck one onto the trash. Deck, the... Oh, wait, hold on. Let's go back a little bit more. Picks up there Huck you go. Watch And then he grabs... 
The transcendent sword. Right there, yeah. off at the bottom of the trash. Swing again, bottom deck, the uh, And he checks again. Mm -hmm. Transcendent sword? Transcendent oh, sword. Uh, 50 so if you have zero security, oh, so why are you holding it in your hand? Yep. And then Lobo for game. Yeah, then look, he got look, look Loboed. At you fucking yeah, then he got disgrace. Lobo for game. And he was looking there yeah, like all a, stupid. Yeah, what a fucking disgrace. Scumbag. Oh my gosh, yeah. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Absolutely. Cody Barker is his name. Terrible. Yeah. Trash can player. I'm oh. glad that other guy was recording him. Yes, good job, Lu 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 Luden. Luden? I, I think know. that's his name. I don't know. Well, yeah, so there was people like that. I, I, I figured, I don't think that that was the only one at Nationals. I, I really doubt oh, that. I highly doubt it. And, like, another thing, so I was dealing with players that, like, when, whenever they shuffled their hand, it was low-key kind of sus. Because, like, the way they shuffled, it was, like, weirdly slow like this. And sometimes they would, like, angle it to a way that they could kind of, like, See? look at their... Mm -hmm. And I didn't pick up on this until later on after I was, like, thinking about my matches and whatnot. But, like, if I was to go back, I would have, like, hardcore been, like, okay, yeah, no, like... Hard shuffle your deck like one mm -hmm. more time, Puddle like shuffle half and like thirty two, mm -hmm. or some bullshit like that. Because absolutely not. Yeah, I no. mean you can make the like I've made the mistake where like I'm doing that fast shuffle, like you take half and then you you put like ch -ch 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 -ch, and you yeah. go like half and half and half and half and half and you just shuffle it like that, like a quick Vegas shuffle. I think right. it's called. And then it's like my hand just tilts a little bit, and I saw the bottom my bottom card. I'm like, oh well, that sucks that that's on the bottom. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I guarantee you there are some players who do it slowly enough to where they're like, oh, I see every single card. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think there was one player that I was playing against that did that, but, like, I don't like, I don't think he was cheating, but he did kind of slow shuffle, which was kind of weird. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it was it was kind of some stuff, some stuff stuff going on. And, like, the way... So I thought player like, some players were going to shuffle the way I shuffled, just to like show the other person, like, hey, I'm I'm not cheating. Like my hand is valid. So what I would do is I would like put down like six piles, and then like, well, okay, I would like shuffle. Hold up, I would like shuffle my deck kind of like this, like four or five times, mm -hmm. and I would take the top card and make six piles. Yep, like. Add them back up. Either I'll put like one pile on top of another one, another on another, mm -hmm. and then after that I'll shuffle again like three more times, and then after that I'll do like five in security and five in my hand. Yeah. That's how I do it. That's, that's how, how I that's feel how like most of us do it in, in our Discord. Exactly. Mm -hmm. but these other people were just weird, bro. Mm -hmm. They were so weird. Yeah, like if you're not dealing your cards out into a pile, then I automatically like suspect you maybe you're new to the game and you've never played a, a, a tcg before mm. so like maybe you'd be like okay so that's how you shuffle properly or you know shuffle fairly but right. if, if you i mean if you're playing in nationals obviously you played the tcg before and right. if you're not shuffling out into piles then i'm gonna automatically suspect you yes and so with that in mind with potentially paying like 30 plus 80 which is 110 mm -hmm. spending 110 bucks and then also dealing with potential cheaters and also having to make sure that your hand is like visible on the screen so other people don't think you're cheating mm -hmm. and then just playing against like a bunch of like incredible people whatnot was it worth it now I feel like my answer is slightly biased only because I didn't do well, <laughs> but I would have to say no. Mm -hmm. And I mainly say no because of the webcam, like of, of the webcam format. Mm -hmm. Now, if we did this in person, like DigiFest, oh, that's going to be oh, fantastic. Gonna slap you. Wanna why? I don't care if because I, I can annihilate it every single time, yo. <laughs> I'm there to have motherfucking fun. Yes. Because the fact that I can, like, get my opponent's deck cut it in like multiple pieces mm -hmm. and whatnot so that I know that he's not stacking and whatnot. Yes. 
Absolutely fantastic. And if you try to cheer Digifest, I'm honestly going to beat the hell out of you. <laughs> yeah. And I will be I, there too. And like, if I see Isaiah throwing hands, I'm throwing hands. I don't care what's going down. You're gonna get I don't a, care a, if Isaiah a punched a little... puppy and you didn't like that and you pushed him. If he's throwing hands at you, bro, I'm throwing hands too. Okay, not puppy. No, no, we do here. We don't support. But that. yeah, you're gonna get a good old TCG cast beat now. <laughs> Heck no. And that's what we'll be known now. For. <laughs> now, if next year, if Nationals is in person, with so if it is in person, this will take out a lot of potential cheaters. Potential and players, actually. I don't think and if it was in person, I don't think 900 people would have part- participated. True. Yeah, honest. especially during like COVID times now. Well, that and but then like, having to get their flight tickets and stuff like that. Or, you know, if they have to yeah. travel, they have to pay travel expenses. I'm sure Bandai's yeah. not going to pay out of pocket for everyone that wants to travel to Nationals. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, if if it was in person, yes. I would say definitely worth it. But with my experience with it, honestly, I would have rather just went to my locals and not have, like, play competitively, but not, like, to that degree and probably save me some money. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. that That's... I, I did have fun. I, I did... I do want to... I do want to point that out there. I did have fun until I... Lost, but besides mm-hmm. that, yeah, um, got to represent the TCG cast. Yes, represent the black community as a minority, because I'm sure there was um, there was not many minorities there. I actually, did play against a black person. I you think. Did. I think. It was I mean, I, I, Digimon is pretty diverse, but True. I mean, if we're being honest, well, like, it's probably like seventy five percent white male. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it probably even more than that. Potential neck beards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> God damn it! Uh, 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 uh. Mm-hmm. Yes, but yeah, that's, you got the, partici- that, you get that the participation prizes. Up. That's pretty. Uh, that's, that's what the thirty well, yeah. bucks paid for. So yeah, I I do get. Oh my gosh, I don't even mm-hmm. remember what. I think they're just like event packs. No, it was pretty I stacked. Think... Participation prizes were pretty stacked. I think and you get oh. you get quite a bit. Let's look. Real quick. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, yeah, I gotta look because I, I do not remember what, what I get for that. And it just tells you just how like distraught I was because <laughs> I, I don't remember what, <laughs> what facts you get. Um, let me see. Uh, here it is. I don't want the link. So you get a, you get a play mat. You get four oh, yeah. evolution packs. You get three event packs and another three event pack too. Yeah, yes. so you get a play mat, yo. You get a whole get a ass play, play mat, mat yeah. just for participating. Yes, I'd have paid to participate, and then yeah, pff, who would? Who cares if I went X three? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, so. That's my opinions of it. I know a lot of other people or other content creators also, uh, well, not only did they did better, but they also had different experiences than mine. So don't just think that my opinion, I guess, is the end all and be all. Mm-hmm. I'm just giving the, of the opinion of somebody that didn't make day two and was sadly, I guess, fodder for people that booked <laughs> the play for day two. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but, uh, do stay tuned for my, uh, Gabu Bond, uh, deck profile. Mm-hmm. Uh, do stay tuned for my EOS Bond deck profile because I, that was, if I was to do that again, I would have played EOS Bond easily. Mm-hmm. That's the one I easily. Really yes. And then, um, and then even though that we're still going to be playing in this, uh, EXO one set six format for for just a little bit. There is a couple decks that I I do want to. Uh, there's just a, a couple fun decks I want to do a profile of. Um, so stay tuned for those. I'm still in the process of. Uh, well, I'm in the process of rebuilding one and uh, kind of 
working out the kinks on the other one. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you like, subscribe, and Comment turn your notifications below. on. Yep, ring that bell, please. We've yes. only hit 100 subscribers. We hit our, our milestone. So we're extremely yes. excited about that. We're going to be hosting a tournament next week in celebration. Um, stay tuned for that. Uh, we will make an announcement in our Discord. If you're not part of our Discord, please feel free to join. I uh, keep the link down in the description, and you can find it on our YouTube channel. Um, celebrate Black History this month and every month because yes. it is important. But um, absolutely, it, it is Black History Month, so go celebrate it. I don't want to say Happy Black History Month. That seems kind of weird. <laughs> celebrate it. Go learn about it. Yes. Um, you know, do do learn you something new. Learn um, you something. And we will see everyone in the next one. Yes. Peace.